Welcome back to Good Morning La, La Land. It's time to raise a glass to Ian and Silent Pool Gin. Thank you so much for being here all the way from the UK. Thank you for having me, and thank you for fixing the English weather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Um, it's an English summer's day out there. It is, <laughs> exactly. indeed. Exactly. Well, we want to give a special shout out to those of you who are friends, family, and people at the distillery who are watching. Thank you for your support here in La La Land. Right. So, okay. Thanks for having me. What brings you to Los Angeles? So, we um, launched Silent Pool Gin in 2015. Um, we started exporting to Europe, uh, then the Far East, um, and then we looked at America. And rather than do what everybody else does, which is launch on the East Coast, because that's the sort of nearest coast to Europe. Because they drink a lot. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we thought West Coast, because they're more progressive. Uh, they embrace new brands. So your, I mean, this bottle, is from a design perspective, I just want to put it in a room and decorate the it's whole room. It's so beautiful. There is a story. Do you want the story? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. The silent pool is a thing. So it's a, it's a spring-fed pool. Uh, it's been there for about 10,000 years in the Surrey Hills. Mm. And it comes up slightly blue because it comes up through a phosphate layer. And that's what we draw our water from. So the reason the bottle is blue is because of the water that we take. We make it on a copper still, hence the copper. And if you look on there, you can see the botanicals that are in there. Oh. So you've got juniper, pear, so beautiful. Uh, wow. orange. And there's also a myth to the pool. So the myth is, in the Middle Ages, there was a woodsman's daughter bathing in the pool. A knight on a charger turned up, rode into the pool to sort of get better acquainted. She didn't want to know. She drew back into the deep part of the pool, and it's completely clear, so it's sort of deceptive. She drowned. He didn't save her. He rode off, but he dropped his hat. And her father picked the hat up. It was evil King John. So if you look, you've got the knight in there. You've got the girl in there and you've got the ducal crown there of the Duke of Northumberland, who's our landlord. Wow. So what is the takeaway from that story? What's the... The takeaway? I don't, there is no takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> it's Life just a beautiful don't legend. Don't, 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 don't go bathing <laughs> in deep water if you can't swim. Ian, were you always a gin man? Do you remember the first time you tasted gin? Yeah, I mean, it's in England, it's a big drink. So people tend to drink gin and tonics. Mm. Little um, G&T. Well, it's I, almost five o'clock in London. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was in the media business, so you had to drink a huge amount of, of gin. Um, came Job out, requirement. Came out of the media business and started to look to see if we could capture what the Scots capture in Scotland. So they capture that whole sort of moody sky, granite, stormy look um, in the area that I live. And I, we li I live in a, a beautiful area called the Surrey Hills, which is sort of rolling um, hills about 30 miles southwest of London. So beautiful. Just to see if that's what we could capture in a bottle. So that's what we tried to do. What is it about gin that the Brits love so much? Why is the G&T such a popular drink? There's a long history of gin uh, and the British. So the, the, the way that uh, gin and tonic came around was um, we used to run India. And there were lots of soldiers out there. Soldiers to stop them getting malaria were given quinine, but they didn't want to take it. They were given citrus fruit to stop them getting scurvy, and they didn't want to take that. But they used to get a daily ration of gin. That's what a soldier got. Mm. And somebody worked out, right, the only way I'm going to get them to, to take their medicine is I'll put it in their ration. Oh, yeah. So they put the quinine in, which is the tonic, put the lemon in, which is the citrus, and that was the start of gin and tonic. Or and they it, put the, the orange and the cinnamon as another big one, right? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. originally, gin, or traditionally, gin and tonic mm. is with a slice of, of citrus. That's, so that's how it sort of started. Came back to the UK and got cleaned up. Love it. Wow. So it's not quite as rustic as it was in whatever it was, 1700. But that's where it started. Often, preventive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I've seen a lot of documentaries. And distilling can be quite a family business, right? And uh, yeah. Tell us about that in the business that you're running. So the business is um, a small distillery in Surrey. Um, there is a small team there. There aren't any family members in there. And we sort of operate as a family. So it's everything from exactly. complete harmony to some scratchy conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we make everything on site. So one of the important things for us is that when people turn up to the distillery, they can see everything. We don't ship anything off site if it's not in a bottle, so it doesn't go to a canning line or a bottling line or something weird. It's never out of our sight. Mm -hmm. So we make it, bottle it, and people buy it um, all in one place. What do you love most about what you do? In fact, I, when we first came here with a colleague um, to negotiate with a, a distributor, as we came into LAX, there's palm trees, 
sunshine, all those houses and those sort of colours that you get to. We looked at each other because we were sort of rattling with bottles as we, <laughs> as we arrived and thought this is just not, it's not a job. It doesn't feel like work. Mm. Mm. So two English guys selling gin in America is not, or in California, is not, is not, it doesn't feel like work. It's a, it feels like a dream. Yeah, it is a dream. And it's, it, it's one of those things that it's a very easy thing to describe to somebody. They either get it or they don't. It's yeah. not like you're selling something and alcohol is a very interesting thing. You know, it's like anything in life. You can use it to celebrate and have beautiful connection or, of course, some people have drinking problems. So we celebrate it here just knowing that it is a, you know, can be a beautiful place for people to connect and if they use it in moderation. So yeah, yeah. you've got to drink in moderation, ideally drink with friends. Um, it's a social drink. In the UK, there's a big social scene around gin um, and that's how it's best enjoyed. Well, I would love if you could teach me how to properly taste <laughs> gin. I'm sure there's a science to it that I have yet to master. In the glass, in the mouth. That's right. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not a huge surprise. No, no, it's so, got to be more complicated than that. I will describe. You it. want to swirl, don't you? Right. I do. I there want to go. swirl. Now, these glasses are Spanish oh. Copa glasses, and they're they're normally for gin and tonic. So you'd normally put a third ice in there, um, a reasonable slug of gin, and then a decent tonic, maybe a fever tree. Give it a swirl around. Give it cheers. a sniff. Cheers to cheers. Cheers. beauty and friendship. Now, this is at room temperature, and it's neat. So that's okay. not normally how you drink it. But have a taste and see what you think. Mm. So this is a very wow. complex, layered mm -hmm. gin. There's lots Beautiful. going on in there. There's a lot It's quite on. a mm -hmm. smooth spirit. We make it on a copper still. Um, but you should get ser a series of different mm -hmm. flavors. Mm -hmm. So some, what do you, I mean, people pick up different. Well, it's really interesting. It's really bright at, at the beginning. And when it finishes, it's not too dry. If I, can, <laughs> I I'm trying here. Uh, but I think that's the best way I, I could describe yeah. it really. And it's got some beautiful legs. That's what they call it in wine. Do you call it the same in gin? No. No. <laughs> we just sit there going, <laughs> like, not I can at taste all. this, I can taste that. <laughs> so people pick out lavender, people get coffee and lime. Some people mm -hmm. get chamomile, rose. Oh, There's hints of licorice in there. It's intense. Oh, well, I definitely There's taste the licorice. 24 botanicals in all. Yeah, you can smell So you, can, you get a different set of flavors. What we didn't want to do was make something that was pigeonholed as, mm -hmm. oh, that's the cucumber one, yeah. or that's the one that you put apples and in. And it will kill off anything mm -hmm. that is uh, bacterial. Yes, right? it's good. It's, it's one of your five a day, of course, because <laughs> right? it's got all sorts of things in it. So, <laughs> so, Ian, I'm very curious, in the line of work that you do, I, you drink a lot of gin, but is who's been the most exciting person that you've, you've toasted to with Silent Pool Gin? Well, our landlord is the Duke of Northumberland. Um, mm -hmm. He's one of the largest landowners in the UK. He comes from an ancient family that arrived um, 1066, the Norman Conquest. Mm -hmm. He has a close relationship with Her Majesty, and we are told it's been gifted at Balmoral and Sandringham. Oh, that, so, Her Majesty is the Queen of actually, England, yes, by the way. The Queen of England. Um, <laughs> so that's probably as high as it's got that we know about. Oh, well, thank you. I, I'm right. drinking like a queen <laughs> right. this morning, Absolutely. Monday in drinking Los Angeles. Well, thank you so ah, much. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Pleasure. Art inside and out. Tell everyone where they can find Silent Pool So they can find this uh, Mission Warehouse, Pasadena, um, In Time, uh, Costa Mesa, Total Wines, uh, Wally's in town have it. Wally's is the best. Wally's mm -hmm. is very mm -hmm. good. Um, our distributor is uh, Wine Warehouse, who's a great team of guys. So if you can't find it, get your local liquor store to reach out to um, Wine Warehouse and they will make sure that you are supplied. Love it. There are 400 establishments in California, so nice. you should never be far away from one of them. Awesome. Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. We'll be back with more. Good morning, Wildland.